you very much. Uh, right. So the uh, name of my hospital is uh, Shaukat Khan Memorial Cancer Hospital and Research Center. And uh, it's a charity hospital, uh, basically, and it gives uh, a free treatment to cancer patients, 70% of the cancer patients who are registered here. Um, and uh, in the past uh, 15 years, uh, more than 80,000 patients have been registered. Uh, and uh, uh, head and neck cancers are the most uh, prevalent, like third most prevalent cancers uh, we see in this hospital. So very basic definition of cancer, that it's an uncontrolled cell division. And uh, everybody wants to identify the first cell which goes mad and create this disease. Um, and there are various uh, <coughs> thoughts about uh, which population is uh, responsible for the creation uh, of the tumor. So uh, one belief is that a differentiated cell undergoes a de-differentiation um, and uh, accumulates approximately 50 mutations and then it's a cancer cell. Um, other people think that it's the progenitor cell which again undergoes de-differentiation with some process of, uh, uh, you know, the factors which, which are the potential factors uh, to convert the normal cells into the malignant cells. Uh, but again, there has to be more than 50 uh, mutations in different genes uh, and then the disease establishes itself. Uh, recently, and when I say recently, that means uh, 30 years, uh, that uh, people think that the ideal candidate for um, the formation of cancer is a stem cell because stem cells uh, within any organ, these have the most uh, potential to uh, memorize the events which happen over a long time and they tend to divide very slowly and uh, remember everything. Uh, but again, they have to undergo the mutations as well. So uh, a normal stem cell has these abilities of self-renewal and multi-lineage um, uh, capacity to mature cells, and uh, these are the uh, parameters which are important for the establishment of the disease. Um, so a lot of uh, has been covered uh, uh, about the definition of these cells, but um, I will say that, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, the, uh, it's a cell which initiates and then it regenerates the tumor. Um, so one has to remember that what are the good stem cells and what are the bad stem cells. So the good stem cells are found in every organ and uh, we, do not, we do not want uh, the uh, uh, tumor, which is an organ in itself. It's a new organ, but it is not needed by the body and the cancer stem cells uh, initiate this uh, new organ. So there are two hypotheses about the, uh, the um, um, understanding of the disease. Uh, and uh, the previously, everybody thought that every cell in the tumor has the capacity to generate the new tumor. But uh, it's very recent that we think that, no, it's a certain population uh, within the tumor. And uh, for complete eradication of the disease, uh, not only we need to eradicate the bulk of the tumor, we have to target these uh, particular cells which are very resistant to the uh, treatments. So the first report uh, was basically on leukemia where they uh, proved the evidence of these cancer stem cells. So it was a very simple experiment that they isolated what they believed is the cancer stem cell based on the expression of certain uh, markers, CD38, um, 30, uh, and uh, uh, absence of a certain marker, CD34. And they thought that only these cells uh, can uh, generate the tumor and the rest of the population, when it is inserted into the animal, it does not create any tumor. Uh, this work was extended for oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma and the similar work was done and what they observed was that when these stem cells, these are cultured in vitro, uh, they produce three different types of colonies, the hollow colons which mimic the tumor and the other colonies which are, uh, uh, which are also created from these stem cells but um, uh, these do not have the ability to create the sphere and the rest of the cells only produce these two types of uh, colonies. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I don't know what am I doing. Uh, so the uh, hollow colons, this is the adhesive colony and the, I'm not sure what's happening. 
The neurocolons, uh, they are the early transit uh, amplifying cells, and the late transit cells uh, are the paracolons. Uh, this is a very uh, typical colony uh, which appears in a cell culture. And this is the list of publica first publications on cancer stem cells. So people did a lot of work on the solid tumor, uh, like breast cancer, brain cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, and hand neck cancers. And these were the suggested cancer stem cell markers for all these uh, type of cancers. And these are the um, centers where these studies were done. Uh, so these cancer stem cells are, are identified based on this expression of certain markers, and they tend to live in a certain niche within an, every organ. Um, and uh, tens to thousands of cells are needed to originate a tumor in uh, animals, uh, which are the proof of concept evidence for the, uh, any type of uh, cancer. So this completes the introduction on uh, uh, cancer stem cells, and uh, we worked on the primary cultures of the uh, human tissues because most of the work which was done during these studies on these studies was on cell lines and uh, limited uh, studies used uh, human tissues to find out the um, expression of these spheres or the pop-ups or the uh, populations which uh, are having the cancer stem cells. So in our study, we specifically collected samples from the uh, tongue, uh, the primary tumor, or the primary lesion has to be on the tongue. And then we collected uh, tumor samples from the metastatic and non-metastatic oral tongue squamous cell carcinoma. And all these patients did not undergo any kind of treatment. Uh, the first, they were the, uh, the first treatment which was given to them was the surgery. So the tumors were removed from the tongue, uh, um, surgically, and where there was a, a neck dissection, we collected the uh, sentinel nodes, the first nodes, which collect the, um, uh, everything from the primary tumor. So we thought that the primary node, the level one node, also has the similar type of cancer stem cells which are present in the primary tumor. So that's why uh, we collected not only the primary tumor on the tongue, uh, but also the uh, level one nodes. And the idea was that if the uh, neck nodes have the similar type of cancer stem cells, maybe uh, with fine needle aspiration, there is a quicker way to find out the positive neck. Uh, because uh, positive neck uh, is very important in, uh, to determine the um, uh, treatment for the uh, disease. Uh, so after collecting the cells, we uh, find out what's the uh, grading of the tumor. So these are the hyperplasia, uh, where there is no uh, evidence of malignant cells. And then we collected the um, uh, non-metastatic uh, samples and the metastatic samples, when, when I say metastasis, that means just spread to the neck nodes because the, uh, the tongue cancer, it tends to spread only to the neck nodes and, and not to the visceral organs very quickly. So um, after collection of the tissue samples, uh, we cultured those. And uh, uh, what we observed was that in the non-cancer sample, which was a hyperplasia only, um, the spheres were generated in three weeks, and when these spheres were collected and uh, 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 cultured for secondary daughter spheres, there were no daughter spheres formed. So these did not have the ability to regenerate uh, the uh, spheres. But the uh, samples from the uh, uh, neck, neck, node, neck node negative uh, oral tongue squamous cell carcinoma these spheres were generated within one week, and these uh, we were able to uh, generate the daughter spheres um, uh, for two generations, and all of these survived for good three weeks, which gives you a window to perform uh, screening uh, experiments or if you want to perform any downstream experiments, and particularly we are in interested in Maldima spectrometry analysis of these spheres, so we collect these spheres for the later analysis. Um, the uh, samples, the specimen which were collected from the nodes, um, the cluster of cells were created within one day, uh, but when these clusters were collected and uh, uh, converted into single cells and re-cultured uh, for daughter spheres, we did not observe any uh, daughter sphere. And um, uh, as for the positive neck, um, oral tongue squamous cell carcinoma, where 
uh, we think that the disease has really progressed, uh, we could observe these spheres within 24 hours and sometimes in only 27 hours uh, because the proliferation of these cells were very, very uh, high and um, these could be passaged for three generations and even for four generations. So again, the possibility of having the primary cultures for such a long time gives you a lot of uh, opportunities for other analyses, uh, especially if you want to screen uh, anti-cancer drugs uh, on these um, uh, tumors, mimic, mimicry tumors in the, in the cell culture. So these are just the uh, uh, slides to show the presence of malignant cells. <coughs> so this uh, image basically shows uh, that once we generated these spheres, we collected these by centrifugation and uh, um, converted them into single cell suspension and again cultured these um, uh, before the culture, we isolated the CD44 positive and CD24 negative population, which, are, which is considered as a combination for the cancer stem cell uh, in the head and neck cancers. Um, and we, uh, after the isolation with MAX, the magnetic associated um, you know, beads, uh, which has the antibodies for these um, markers, um, uh, the negative cells for CD44 differentiated on the third day. But the CD44 positive cells, uh, these created those spheres or pop-ups again, uh, which we think that one of or two of these uh, spheres are actually cancer stem cells and the rest of the cells are again the normal cells. Um, and as for the nodes, uh, we did not observe the um, typical spheres uh, these were just collection of cells, and these were created in one week, so we don't, we don't think that it is a real uh, cancer stem cell sphere population, uh, but it's, um, it's a collection of cells. So uh, what our primary aim was, that we wanted to see whether such similar cells are present in the nodes or not, uh, we did not see any promising results. Um, so these uh, spheres were again collected and uh, uh, were cultured again, for the presence of the holocolons and neurocolons and paracolons, and we did observe those. And uh, when these colonies, uh, uh, the spheres in the node uh, culture were collected and uh, recultured, we did not observe any spheres. Uh, uh, so node is not probably a good um, biological source for studying the um, uh, uh, cancer stem cell spheres, uh, although, because we only studied these uh, patterns in three samples, three patient samples. So we do think that maybe uh, you know, conditions need to be optimized uh, because there was a cluster of uh, cells which were formed in the nod tissues, but uh, maybe uh, it needs to be um, uh, further uh, investigated. Um, we have established uh, this primary cancer stem cell sphere uh, uh, setup, and we have collected these spheres, uh, and now we are in the process of uh, analyzing these, the protein profile of these uh, spheres uh, by Maldima spectrometry, and the idea is that the proteins should be different in um, uh, non-cancer tissues and metastatic tissues and non-metastatic tissues and the uh, differentially expre expressed proteins um, will be further validated on a larger uh, number of patient samples. So these are my uh, study group members from Shokat Khanam Memorial Cancer Hospital and the University of Bradford, and I thank them for their uh, contribution, and I thank you all for your attention. Any questions? Well, this part of work has been published already in Cancer Cell International uh, Journal, uh, but the work which is um, uh, with the Maldima spectrometry analysis, that is, you know, at the very end of its, um, you know, progress. So we will publish it soon. So, very nice talk.
conditions that work out for maybe other type of cancer that you could apply in your system? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the conditions uh, we used, uh, these are basically for uh, one, that uh, first paper which was on the breast cancer stem cells. We used those conditions. Um, and uh, also there was another group in, um, uh, uh, in, in Michigan University, I suppose. Um, they did this work on the mouse tongue cancer stem cells. <coughs> so we, used, we modified their uh, buff, uh, yeah, cell culture conditions a little to grow these cells. And one of the biggest problems which I was facing was that because the, the uh, human tissues are already having some kind of either fungal or bacterial growth going on, uh, you have to modify those already published uh, recipes because it doesn't work for your samples. So yes, we modified a little, but of course I, I think that for the nodal samples perhaps the, uh, it needs more optimization.